Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, the organizers, for uh, this invitation for letting me doing this presentation. I will try to be short so we can <laughs> we can go back on schedule. So. Uh, I will talk about wave propagation at the interface between a fluid and microstructured solid modeled as a dipolar graded continuum. Uh, well, the, the outline of the presentation will be on the introduction and description of the model. I will talk about the reflection of plane harmonic waves and then there will be some... Um, I think uh, I don't have to spend time to convince you that for uh, modeling uh, it capture uh, phenomena which occurs at small length scale one can use as a, an higher gradient an higher gradient material which introduces some uh, characteristic length, uh, characteristic lengths and then when uh, the um, uh, wavelength becomes smaller enough to match this this characteristic length we have some phenomena which, which occur uh, I choose the dipolar gradient model which we will uh, see you later uh, because it was already used for um, describing the uh, behavior of cortical bone but we can think uh, of applying the results, these results also to some other metamaterial. Uh, I will concentrate my, my talk on fluid solid interfaces because it's a very common uh, configuration when studying the material properties of bones for instance. Uh, so the objective will be to see how the internal length introduced by this higher gradient model will influence wave propagation and reflection and maybe to apply these results to material properties uh, characterization. Uh, let me do a quick literature review of the paper which inspired this work. Uh, I start with uh, the paper by Mindlin in 64 where the model is, is presented because this will be a simplified model or based on that. Some papers on wave propagation in second gradient continua, some paper on wave reflection and surface wave uh, in this dipolar gradient uh, continua. A paper which gives an estimation, which gives an estimation of the uh, internal lengths for cortical bones, so I can use uh, reasonable parameters and uh, the main paper, the, ba the paper which is the main source of this presentation which is a recent paper. Uh, so the configuration is very simple, we have two half spaces filled by a uh, classic fluid uh, with this density, mass density and bulk modulus and a dipolar gradient solid uh, which is characterized by density lame parameters and the two lengths that we will I will define shortly. Uh, basically, this dipolar gradient model is a sim simplified version of the Mindling Form 2 gradient elasticity model. It's the most simple, uh, actually, the most simple combination of parameters. We, we only have two uh, parameters. We, if we consider uh, the starting point, this approximation for an heterogeneous structure, a heterogeneous material, we will end up with, uh, with cubes uh, with length 2h, characteristic length 2h, which will be at the base of the calculation for microinertia. And then we will introduce, through a, specif a specific internal energy density, a gradient length, which I call L. So here in internal energy, we have the classic term. Uh, the only kinematical descriptor here is the macroscopic displacement. So we have the classic term and the gradient term, which is written in a way that we use Lame parameters inside, the same Lame parameters which we have for first gradient, and um, the characteristic length L, which is, will be related to, uh, uh, to the gradient effects. Then we have the kinetic energy with the classical part and um, a micro inertia, a micro inertia term, which is re which will be related to the micro inertia and then to the other characteristic length. So we will see at the end that these two characteristic lengths will be concurring in a way, will not give the same uh, the same um, effect. Uh, so I will go briefly through the governing equation because there are. The quite uh, standard. So we have the equation for the fluid and for the dipolar gradient solid we have um, 
the generalized the divergence of the generalized stress and this part which is due to the presence of the micro inertia into the kinetic energy. Uh, so we end up with uh, the classic uh, the Cauchy stress and the third order tensor which in this case for the particular choice of the energy is expressed by uh, the gradient of the Cauchy tensor and it's still symmetric. So the, uh, we end up with a generalized stress which is still uh, symmetric but this is the classic model. At the boundary conditions we have the, the equations for, for traction and uh, the equation for um, uh, double forces. Uh, and here we have the pressure, the pressure, the normal pressure of the fluid. Uh, well, it, to this, we have to add the continuity of normal, normal velocities, which is not mentioned. Uh, so, we, first of all, uh, it is interesting to, to see how waves propagate in this, in this medium. So, uh, the standard to perform an LMOS decomposition using two potentials, the, we decompose the position vector, the displacement vector with uh, the gradient of a scalar potential and the curl of a, of a vector potential so that we, we can uncouple uh, a wave equation for P waves and, and S waves and uh, then study wave propagation, plane wave propagation in one direction and extract the dispersion equations and then calculate the root of this dispersion equation to see that for uh, each uh, wave resistance for a P wave, we have two propagative waves, things real, um, uh, related to complex uh, wave number, and uh, but some vanishing, vanishing waves, or uh, standing waves that will cause boundary layer if we are near the, the surface. Uh, it is not this interesting to show the dispersion relation with respect to K because it's quite standard. It is interesting to see what happens to phase velocity and group velocity. In this case, because phase velocity will affect, will greatly affect the reflection and the reflection phenomena through the, the, critical, the, the critical angle. Uh, so we can see that uh, your dispersion is exactly the same, so you can replace the alpha by P or S for obtaining the expression for P waves and S waves. So we see that we, here we have the classic velocity for the for, for first gradient um, model. And we see that if we put, if we put L, the, the internal length L and the micro to zero, we fall back to the classic case. And the same for, for group velocity. So what is interesting is to see if we have normal dispersion or anomalous dispersion and we see that this is triggered this is triggered by the value of um, this value uh, square uh, 3 squared L over H so here we see that L and H have not the same the same effect on, on, on wave, wave propagation if we have this ratio smaller than 1 we have normal dispersion if we have these ratios higher than one, we have anomalous dispersion. So we will, in this case, because from now on, we'll, it is necessary to choose these, these parameters, even doing a, 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 a parametric study, we choose to place ourselves in, uh, in the case of normal dispersion. So let's see what happened to phase velocity. <coughs> we see here we have the frequency and the value of the phase velocity. In dot, you have the classic value for P waves, S waves, and the fluid. And we see that augmenting the, when the frequency is augmented, we have a strong dispersion phenomena. And the most important thing is to see that increasing L will, uh, let's say, speed up the waves, and increasing H will uh, slow the waves. So L and H have a concurring effect on, on, on phase velocity and you can, if you're familiar with the phenomena of, of reflection uh, you can see that there will be the key, key points will be when the waves will become slower than the fluid the, the, the velocity of the, of the fluid here just to say the uh, length have been chosen to match cortical bones so the H is one millimeter, it's almost the size of an osteon and uh, starting from the paper with, which I mentioned uh, before or from Ben Amos, we chose L to be around 
uh, one uh, um, over uh, L over 10. Almost. So this will be the <coughs> the situation. We have an incident fluid the wave in the fluid, so we will have a reflected wave with the same angle. And when we are above the critical angles, we will have P waves and S, a P wave and S wave propagating to the the dipolar solid. And we will always have two surface waves which are related. Uh, to the um, uh, real uh, vanishing uh, solutions that I showed you before in the dispersion uh, relation. Uh, this configuration will change when we will pass the critical angle because then there will be other contribution to surface, to surface waves. Uh, first of all, I would like to show you what happens for normal incidence, so no angle of incidence. And uh, here in, in the left picture, you can see the reflection coefficient in function of the ratio between the wavelength and two times uh, um, two times h, which is the actual size of the of the microstructure of the of the microstructure. So when the uh, wavelength is sufficiently higher, we don't have any any influence because the dotted line is the classical result which we get for a standard material. You see that we start having an influence of the material when we approach the ratio 1, so when the wavelength approach the, approaches the um, value of uh, the, the, the characteristic size of the, of the material. Then we can have, depending on, on the value of L, we can also have total transmission depending on L and then if we decrease the wavelength we pass to, to, total, to total reflection. So in this case L, which is the gradient length, uh, in a way controls the smoothness of this, this transition and, and allows also for some values to have complete, complete uh, reflection, complete transmission. Uh, here you can see on the phase shifts that uh, the phase shift is almost is present in the, this transition zone and is controlled by by the parameter L. One aspect which is really important is, is to see what happens to the critical angles. The critical angle is the angle for which we don't have, for instance, the critical angle for P for P waves is, is the angle for which we don't have transmission of P waves into the into the material. We can see that. Uh, at low frequency, we obtain the classical value, since P waves in this material are faster than, than S waves. We have, first of all, the, the critical angle. We obtain first the critical angle for P waves, then for S waves. Then, when increasing the frequency, we can see that the value of the critical angles changes, and we can remark that L and H have a different effect on this uh, dispersion of the critical angle and most of all we can divide the frequency band in, in three zones. We have a low frequency which we will, I will call a low frequency zone where there are two critical angles for both waves, a mid frequency zone where there is only the angle, for, the critical angle for uh, P waves, it means that S waves are always slower than, than the fluid, so there's no critical angle for S waves, and a third zone where there is no uh, critical angles. So uh, I choose this three zone based on the intermediate value of L and H. Uh, so once we did this, this remark, it is easy. When looking at the picture of the reflection coefficient in function of the angle, and of the frequency where white is total reflection and uh, black is total, is total transmission, it's easy to recognize the trace of the evolution of the critical angles because when we have the, a wave incident at critical angle, we always have full uh, total reflection. So in order to better understand what's, uh, what's in this picture is better to perform uh, some, uh, some cut. So we will do a cut at low frequency 
and we do expect to find the classic behavior. And this is what we obtain. This is this, this curve. We start from a reflection coefficient which is around 0, 0, 004. And then when there is the first critical angle for P waves, we have total reflection. We go back almost to total transmission and then we have the plateau after after the critical angle for S waves. And on the phase shift plot we also have the same the same behavior and we we recognize exactly the the classic behavior for for, for at the fluid solid interface. When we pass to a a cut performed in the middle frequency range where only one uh, critical angle is, is present, we find this curve where we have almost complete transmission at low frequencies, then we arrive to the critical angle and then there is complete, complete uh, reflection. And uh, at last we have the, the last curve when we start from uh, complete uh, reflection, the reflection coefficient goes uh, lower and then goes back to uh, to one. So we can uh, discriminate this this three three zone by by studying the the reflection coefficient. And uh, as I said before, the effect on these curves of the two parameters is concurring. And so we will they will have a different effect on each on each parameter. So I. I since I didn't have much time, I, I cut the last part of the presentation. And um, where there were some preliminary results about, about surface wave, I can talk, if someone is interested, I can talk about this later. So I will pass to the summary. So I presented the analysis of reflection of plane waves and that free solid interface, and I showed the, um, how the two internal length parameters affected the reflection of, of these plane waves. This is a re really recent study, so the perspectives are a lot, <laughs> and there are a lot of things to do. And uh, for instance, we can add uh, more complicated constitutive equations for the material, uh, functional graded material, anisotropic or orthotropic materials, plates, always considering uh, the interface with the fluid, because the interface with the fluid complicates a lot the the, the study. And at the end, uh, we would like to, to, to compare these results with um, experimental results to, to really measure this kind of coefficient in actual, in actual material. So, uh, thank you for, for your attention. Thank you. Yes. In here, we, we still have validity of the continuum model. Is we are not at the limit. It will be not like this, but. Uh, the, the, those with, uh, yes, the, here there will be a limit, of course, there will be a limit, uh, we cannot go to zero, uh, in, but here we have uh, on the size of, this is a non-dimensional, but if H is one, million, one millimeter, we have a wavelength which is almost of the, of the, of the order of magnitude of one millimeter, so we still have, uh, the continuum model is still, still